Hello, Gotham. I am Dr. Jonathan Crane, and I'm listening. Hello, I've got a question. Yes, caller, you're on the air. Is your refrigerator running? I see what you're doing, but... Well, you better go catch it! <laughs> I should have been a dentist. They're naturally scary and they come with their own gas. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation. The Five Points are articulator, packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and for the entire month of October, we're going to have some very special Halloween reviews. It's not Halloween without a Scarecrow, so today we're taking a look at the McFarlane Toys Batman the Animated Series Condom and King Build-Away version. Starting off with the packaging, and I love this box. It's very similar to a DC Multiverse collect-to-build window box, but instead of being generic, it's a celebration of Batman the Animated Series. It's also a huge step up from the one-and-done blister cards of the original DC Collectibles line. These figures were notoriously fragile, so having a collector-friendly box to put them back into would have been preferred. The back is similar to a collect -a build Big picture of the Build-A-Figure. In this case, the Condiment King. Here are the parts you need. Here's how to build them. And down here is all the figures in the wave. The other figures include Batman, Robin, and Mr. Freeze. But unlike DC Multiverse, which just has some names and logos on the side, this one features fabulous artwork of the figure that we're getting. This is a fun, welcome surprise, and something I've been wanting for a long time. For packaging, I'm giving Scarecrow a very enthusiastic one whole point. Moving on to presentation, at the top of his head, Scarecrow stands at five and three quarters inches, but to the top of his hat, he comes to six and a half. This figure perfectly recreates his look from the classic show, and is 100% reuse of the original figure produced by DC Collectibles. All McFarlane did was give it a new paint job. A paint job featuring cell shading. I get that in a cartoon you have to add shading to give the illusion of depth and dimension, but when you bring something into physical reality, you don't really have to do that. Actual light and shadow does it for you. By contrast, the original figures not only didn't have cell shading, they were cast in a very flat plastic. As such, there is a difference between the two, but as for how much it's going to stick out, that's really more of a question for playability. Zooming on into the face, I love this deranged expression. This was Scarecrow's second look on the series. His overall body and costume was the same, but the original head was much narrower, much less expressive, and didn't have the straw hair. Despite my concerns, I will say the shading on this is relatively subtle, leastways as compared to Condiment King, but we'll get there when we get there. I think I've made it pretty clear where I stand on cell shading, but if you like it, more power to you. In fact, despite the cell shading and how I feel about it, for presentation I'm giving this scarecrow one whole point. Moving on to posability, and I was so concerned about how brittle this figure might have been, I actually saved filming this section for last. For on the top, and his entire neck serves as a dumbbell joint with a ball and hinge at the top. Because of that straw, though, he can't really look up. You can look down just fine, though. Creepy amount of tilt. And, of course, side to side. Moving on down, and Scarecrow has swivel hinge shoulders that can only raise about this high. No bicep swivel or anything like that. Moving on down, the army has single-jointed swivel hinge elbows that do get a pretty decent bend. And then swivel hinge wrists. Moving to the middle, and all Scarecrow has is a waist swivel underneath his tunic. And while that is very limiting, I do understand the desire to preserve the natural lines of the animated design. The old Mattel figure tried to to compensate for this by including multiple waist swivels, but really it just ended up looking weird. Admittedly this is frustrating, but I get it. Below the row belt, and Scarecrow actually has swivel hinge hips, twisting the thigh and you can see the balls. They kick side to side okay, but instead of kicking out they just kind of roll upward. Traveling down the leg and Crane does have double jointed knees, admittedly I'm very pleasantly surprised by the bend, and then all the way down his ankles can swivel, hinge, but sadly no pivot. While I appreciate that lanky characters like this do present some very unique posability challenges, this is still a bit limited. Even worse, the fear of the figure breaking makes me too scared to really even try. For posability, I'm giving the Scarecrow half a point. Moving on to playability, and as is customary for McFarlane Toys, Scarecrow comes with a trading card. Instead of ripping the blister off like normal, I tried cutting it out with a razor, and sadly nicked it in the process. If you want to read what it says, though, here you go. You might 
notice that unlike usual, it does not come with a figure stand. That's because while Dr. Jonathan Crane does have a peg hole, because McFarlane didn't actually sculpt this figure, they are incompatible. One thing Scarecrow does come with is this scary sickle. It's got a creepy, jaggedy blade and a handy handle. It doesn't fit whatsoever in his hand. Though I suppose if you hold it this way, it kind of works. Again, though, this isn't really McFarlane's fault because they technically didn't sculpt this figure. Fortunately, he does come with an additional pair of hands, and while this one isn't exactly a grippy hand either, you can at least use it to help stabilize it. Scarecrow also comes with this alternate unmasked head. The hollowed out eyes are fine, of course. Otherwise, the good doctor might want to have that weird spot on his nose checked out, and he should really give up on trying to grow that soul patch. Obviously, the highlight for Scarecrow's accessories is the con. King. This is an action figure I thought would never exist, and near as I can tell, McFarlane did make this one, and it looks great. From this angle, anyway. Again, if this is your thing, I'm not saying you shouldn't like it. What I am saying is if it wasn't cell shaded I would have relished the chance to put this guy together. But for my taste, it just doesn't pass mustard. Of course, based off of my German heritage, maybe I'm just an old sauerkraut. Even if I did change my mind, though, as hard as these figures are to find at this point, I'd never catch up. Personally, I think all this false scarcity nonsense is a big load of horseradish. But playability is more than just accessories or condiment puns. It's also about how well your figure plays with others. For all the scarecrows in my cornfield of collectibles, and here's the original animated series version by Kenner. When next we saw Dr. Jonathan Crane in action figure form, it was this colossal version from Kenner's Legends of the Dark Knight line. But for something a bit more classic, here's this one by Mattel. Next up is the Super Friends version from DC Direct, and still my favorite Scarecrow figure, Hush by DC Direct. Also by DC Direct is Arkham Asylum, which is a nightmare to stand. Though I'm not quite yet willing to open it, here we have the Scarecrow from the new Batman Adventures. And then moving on to DC Multiverse is the gold label Arkham Knight, the poncho wearing Infinite Frontier version. And lastly, least ways for my collection, the DC Multiverse Dark Knight Trilogy version. Of course, for the most important comparisons, we have to look at the original Batman the Animated Series collection by DC Collectibles. First up, and we've gotta have Batman. Next is Robin, who despite being the boy wonder, does seem a little bit small by comparison. For the Clown Prince of Crime, and here we have the Joker as matchlessly voiced by Mark Hamill. Here we have the very difficult to stand Harley Quinn. Here is a first release Catwoman with a broken hand. Remember, I did say these were pretty fragile. Fortunately, the Penguin's pretty stout. One of my favorite figures in the line, which I know I've shown you before, is the Riddler. Next up is Mr. Freeze. And and Poison Ivy, who I've got to admit I've always been a bit let down by. The combination of giant head and tiny body and no neck really just doesn't feel like how she looked on the show. For a much better executed female villain, and here we have the Phantasm. And then for a couple of larger scale villains, and here we have Clayface and Man Bat. For a relative scale comparison, here's Scarecrow with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here he is with Stealth Iron Man. What's up? Between the cell shading and the different finish, I was really concerned that Scarecrow wasn't going to fit in with the rest of the collection, but putting him in a group shot, and honestly, I barely notice. Even alongside just the other figures that were reissued for this wave, I'm pretty happy. For playability, I'm giving this Scarecrow one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. I once found the original Scarecrow in a battered box on clearance at a ThinkGeek store for only $12, and I passed it by. Now, I see people on eBay trying to sell it anywhere from $350 upward. The new one might be a Target exclusive and might not be everything I wanted, but it is only $30. It does make me ask whether $30 is a fair price for a reissued figure that McFarlane didn't even make, but those kinds of questions will drive you mad. Based solely on his cost compared to the aftermarket, for price, I'm giving this Scarecrow one whole point for a grand total of $4.5 out of five. What other previously made Batman the Animated Series figures do you hope McFarlane reissues, and which never before made characters do you hope he creates? Tell me everything in the comments below. For more 5 POA Ween videos, check out one of these, and come back for more Halloween videos all month long. Thank you so much for watching, I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice, have fun, and stay spooky.